We wouldn't be here today without our distinguished guests, so let me introduce them to you. On my immediate left is Peter Brickle, um, BOC Research Chemist at Environment Canada, and um, Peter is an alumnus. Um, next to Peter is Karen Johnson, um, teacher at um, chemistry, science teacher at, um, with the Toronto District School Board, also an alumnus. Um, um, next to Karen is Nan Lee, Dr. Nan Lee, um, the senior scientist at Sanofi Pasteur. Um, and although you didn't uh, study at York, we still love you and we're very happy to have <laughs> Thank you. you. Um, I didn't study at York either. So. Um, next to Nan um, is Kevin Nixon, um, alumnus, manager of core lab of Gamma Dynacare Medical Laboratories. And um, next to Kevin is Joanna Gadabu. Um, associate Lawyer in the Technology and Intellectual Property Department, department at McMillan um, LLP. Okay. Um, also in the one Okay. So I'm going to begin, get us started, and then certainly if there are any questions, um, raise your hand and I'll, um, you know, I'll, I'll try to get to as many questions from the floor as possible. Um, so I'd like to um, ask all of the panelists, we'll start with Peter, because um, you're on my immediate left, <laughs> so I get to pick on you. Um, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself um, and the work that you do, that you currently do, and how you got there. So how did you get from graduating from university to where you are now? Um, what were, were there any pivotal moments, people who inspired you, anything that, um, that sort of spurred you on and moved you forward in your career? Peter? Okay. I'll try and start off with a... Uh, uh, Answer the first question first, which is what I do. I'm called a VOC research chemist with the federal government, Environment Canada. And uh, what that stands for is volatile organic compounds. Uh, I basically design, build, uh, take out of the field, and, and use for measurements uh, instruments that measure hydrocarbons and other volatile uh, substances in trace levels in the environment. Uh, the main reason for that is to do with. Uh, me measuring things that will be uh, producers of photochemical smog. Um, <clears throat> lots of nice hot days like this uh, contribute to a lot of concern for about uh, smog in the cities. And uh, that's the basic function I fulfill now. It's a very broad job. Um, I work in a small lab, a lab group of three people, so everyone kind of does a bit of everything, and you'll get that feeling, I guess, as I talk a bit more. <clears throat> and how I got here is uh, uh, of a long story. I'm a bit of an, an imposter. I don't have a chemistry degree. Uh, I am a York alumnus. Uh, I uh, studied biology at York. And uh, I started off, my very first job was working as a sales rep selling um, industrial chemicals. And uh, how did I get that job? A friend of mine had a company where the sales reps came from that place and heard that there was a job for a, a chemistry sales rep. So I applied and got that job. So I guess that's an answer to networking. Sometimes it pays off. Uh, I, I did that job for about a year and uh, didn't really inspire to be a salesman, so I, I left that. Um, spent some time doing photography, which is my other, my other lot part of time, and ended up, actually I'm a, I guess I'm kind of a poster child for the Career Center because after all that I came back and looked on the job boards at the Career Center and saw a chemistry job posting and made a phone call from the Career Center, had a sort of phone interview and did a real interview later and then I was into a consulting job, an environmental consultant. And uh, I did that for six years. It's a very much a jack of all trades type of job. It was a small company. Did, it started off working in the lab, then into uh, uh, doing uh, project management, uh, bidding on projects for air quality monitoring, usually, things like that. And after six years of that, I was looking for a change. And uh, one of the people in that company had moved on to the federal government and let me know that there was a chemistry position coming up um, in a related field to what I've been doing in a consulting company. So I applied for that, and here I am 19 years later, and I was still working in chemistry and uh, many related things. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Karen. Well, uh, thank you. Well, as uh, Sandra said, I'm a chemistry teacher. I've been teaching for over 10 years. I will say nothing more. I don't want you to date me. Um, most of those uh, years have been with the Toronto District School Board, except for a two-year stint, where I was head of science at an international school in Singapore. 
Um, it's been 10 years since I've been back. I've been at a school um, called North Toronto, uh, best school in the city, um, where I'm working as the, one of the curriculum leaders for science. Um, I help to support the leadership team at our school, support the staff, and I guess in a, in a nutshell, I've just been, you know, I'm one of those who graduated from university, not with the intention of uh, being a teacher. In fact, I wanted to be a doctor. When I graduated from, um, <clears throat> um, not Mac, I'm sorry, not, not York, I graduated, graduated from Mac with a biochemistry degree. And uh, when I didn't get in, I thought, oh crap, what am I gonna do now? And fortunately, I was a TA um, in the, the chemistry lab during my undergraduate years. Um, I'd done numerous t um, tutoring volunteer opportunities, so I thought, you know, what am I good at? What do I really enjoy? And realized, really, it was chemistry. In fact, I think I was a little chemist from I was born. I was one of those who used to mix my soup, my drinks, my yogurt, everything would be mixing. So upon evaluating my skills and what I really loved, it was really chemistry. And even though I didn't get in medical school, I honestly can say 10, over 10 years later, I have not regretted um, my choice, my decision. In terms of how I actually got my first job, I'm not quite sure, but it's networking again. I went back to my old high school after I was rejected and wanted to volunteer. And I volunteered for a year my old high school, got some teaching experience, which again, I really loved. I applied to York at this time at U of T. I chose York, <laughs> and uh, 10 years later, over 10 years later, I am, as I say, head of science at North Toronto. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so as you see, I'm not really an uh, alumni with uh, York University. And different from the other panelists, uh, I'm a first generation immigrant, so I came to Canada uh, when I was 21, after I got my undergrad degree in China. And um, I guess my career path is kind of um, fairly straightforward. Um, I got my PhD, and then I stayed in, um, I got my T PhD in Edmonton from University of Alberta. And I stayed in Alberta Cancer Board as a facility manager, uh, trying to decide whether I should stay as a university um, professor or, you know, switch career. And I figured maybe, um, I should try industry, so I, I sent a resume to a small biotech company, and I want some challenge. I went there for about uh, three months, and I figured this is not what I want. And uh, my friend, uh, Dr. Chuang Ta, who was a panelist from last year, referred me to the current company. So Sanofi Pasteur is um, the largest vaccine company in the world. So it's part of the uh, Sanofi family, which is, uh, we have about, uh, more than 100,000 employees worldwide. So what I do in Toronto is that I belong to a biochemistry group um, for analytical R&D. So what we do is that um, in order for us to release um, material like vaccines or drugs um, to test in clinical trials on, in people's arms, uh, we need to do a series of testing. And, and for, uh, for us, we just develop the most up-to-date test and, uh, so that we can ensure the quality, safety, you know, efficacy of all this uh, material that's going to uh, babies and uh, human beings. So as you know, that uh, vaccine actually injected into uh, healthy people, so it make it more, even more challenging and interesting. So that's what I do right now and uh, really enjoy it. I'm glad that I have the opportunity to come here and share the story with you. Thanks. I finished my degree and then I got a job here as a research assistant with one of the professors. And she said to me, well, you're so good working in the lab, why don't you work in the lab, right? <laughs> uh, and I said, well, sure, where? And we searched out some areas and I put resumes in everywhere and finally landed a job at a small medical testing laboratory. And from there, through amalgamations and buyouts, I've been there for <clears throat> 30 years, uh, <laughs> to uh, one of the largest, if not the largest, medical testing company in North America. Uh, we uh, process millions of tests every single year on your blood. So when you go to the doctor and get your blood drawn, then one of our couriers comes along and picks up the blood and takes it to our testing facility, which is now in Brampton, and uh, tests your sample, and it sends the results back to the doctor. Um, through the Bachelor of Science that I got here, uh, I was able to 
move into a, a, a well from an entry level position up to a management position fairly quickly, uh, finding that uh, you know I had <clears throat> received the the necessary tools here from York to develop and help with project management, uh, production, uh, quality assurance, uh, things that are all needed, especially in these uh, days of fiscal restraints and that. Mm -hmm. And from there, I've taken over now on the, uh, the core lab manager at night at uh, Gamma Dynacare. Thank you, Joanna. Yeah. So I'm a lawyer, which uh, may sound pretty odd, uh, <laughs> having done a chemistry undergraduate. But like 80% uh, of first year chemistry students, I wanted to go to med school. <laughs> <laughs> and when that didn't pan out, then I applied to law school and got in. And I don't regret my decision either. I'm really, really happy um, with what I do and I really enjoy it. And um, as I mentioned, I'm in the uh, intellectual property group. So I deal with copyrights, trademarks, and patents. And I think where a chemistry undergrad really comes to play is in patent law because if you are if you're patenting a chemical invention or a drug or something like that, then you really need to know the chemistry behind it. So um, the other day I was just doing something you know where I needed to know okay what's an aqueous solution. I mean to someone who hasn't taken chemistry, you know they they're just scared of the language right away. So so you really need to 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 know that and. Um, even if you don't go into, let's say, intellectual property, law is such a vast area that, uh, and I think, I think a science degree uh, really gives you the skills and the critical sort of thinking and analytical skills that you need in law, because law is also, you know, it's it's interpreting case law and, and statutes, and it, it's the same sort of skills just applied to a different thing. So if you have any other sort of questions about that, then yeah, I can definitely answer. Great, thank you. I think we'll stay with you, jo Joanna. Oh, sure, um, so um, I want to follow up with what you just talked about. Um, many students I interact with um, at the Career Center often ask, um, they, they come in and they're asking, how important is my major? How important are the courses that I'm taking to in defining my career options and my mm -hmm. career path? Um, so, and, and sometimes they're they're faced with, oh, should I, I'm in chemistry right now, but I'm thinking of switching over to biology. Is that going to destroy my career options and, and my chances of getting into medical school or whatever it may be? Um, so can, I'm wondering if the panelists could sort of speak to that. So for law school, you don't, it doesn't really matter. Uh, <laughs> you pretty much can have a, an undergrad in anything, but, but if you want to pursue patent law, uh, then which is also very specific and very specialized. So you could either do chemical patents, and that's a very, very specialized area of law where you need a chemistry undergrad, uh, and it's very valuable, and people are seeking, uh, people who have a chemistry undergrad and want to do law at the same time. Or you could do, um, I think there's something bio, biochemical, or if you want to go in that area. So yeah, but in other respects, I mean, I don't, I don't think law school has any requirements, at least not when I apply, in terms of course courses that you have to take. Okay. Yeah, again, it depends on which field you want to go into. The um, field that I went into, um, because I had biochemistry, um, I soon found out, and governments are, are wonderful, they change regulations on you as you're, as you're going through. Uh, when I started in my position, uh, I was fine as a Bachelor of Science. They said, that's great. And then the government came along and Ministry of Health and said, oh, so well, to continue working in a medical laboratory, you have to have a technologist diploma. Okay, great. So I went through, took it at night, and because I had the biochemistry background, boom, in one year of night courses, I had my technologist diploma and then I went on and I said okay well there's an advanced one I took that the next year so I got as high as I could in the technologist but it was all because I had streamlined into biochemistry as opposed to a broader subject base. 
I don't know how to answer that question because, but uh, from my personal experience, uh, my bachelor is in chemistry and my PhD is in chemistry, but specializing kind of uh, uh, interdisciplinary between biochemistry and chemistry. And now I work in biochemistry platform, but uh, work on a lot on biophysics as well. And for our summer student, co-op student, a lot of entry level people, they have uh, background either chemistry, biology, biochemistry, lab medicine, pathology, all kinds of things. So we are looking at quality of the person, not necessarily exactly what you studied in school. So organizational behaviors are very, also very important. So yeah, so whatever you feel. I think you did answer that question. Yeah. Thank you. Karen. I'm a chemistry teacher. I guess you have to be, uh, <laughs> you have to know chemistry to teach the course. Uh, my background being biochemistry. Um, I'll say one thing first, uh, just with the discussions that we've been having within the um, chemistry teachers when we go to PA, PD sessions or PA sessions. I think, a not, I don't know what it is at York, but at least in teaching, not a lot of chemistry teachers are actually pure chemists. And I know the science teachers of Ontario wants pure chemist. Mm -hmm. So with all the job you know, insecurity, I guess, in teaching, if you have a pure chemistry degree, you'll be desired. Mm -hmm. um, so keep that in mind. But I, you know, what I tell my students is keeping your, we're living, man, ever evolving mm -hmm. in a society. I mean, changes are so rampant. So don't lock yourself really into anything. I think in, back in the 1990s, there was a book I was saying to Peter that came out that said, they working people at that time in the 90s would go through five or so careers. I'm sure it's more now. So keeping um, keeping yourself flexible. Courses are always available. I mean, I guess with chemistry uh, online courses, I don't go for those. But you know, even if you you know, in terms of the you know your students being concerned as to what they should or not be taking, just being open. And yes, they may be doing something today, but tomorrow take another course if they need to. Right? Um, I just want to do a follow up on what you just said about um, chemistry teachers, would that to the same um, logic um, relate to like say biology teachers or math teachers, they, so they want, so a math teacher, uh, the government is looking for people who majored in math, and I, ideally? I this is just with, along with the science teachers, okay. you know, when we have our meetings, that they're just concerned with all the safety. Part of, um, I'm sure you've heard the news, lots of accidents have been happening in labs. Um, you know, students getting hurt, and any time a student gets hurt, the board is uh, liable. And one of the, I'm sure it's a political move, is somehow maybe blame the teacher. Maybe they're not skilled enough in knowing about the chemistry, knowing about the chemicals that are actually engaged in experiments. So that's why I guess the pull for really having pure chemists and real chemists, somebody who understands how these chemicals work, rather than just having a generalist, for example, especially at the senior level, grades 11, 12. Uh, I guess since I'm a biology graduate and it says chemist over there on the sign, I have to say that specialization where I'm working now is not terribly critical. And I, I having worked in sales, technical sales or chemical sales, and in environmental consulting and now in uh, government chemistry, uh, the, the BSc seems to be important if you're uh, having the science degree rather than uh, maybe a more general degree is helpful. But I'm racking my brains to think if I know of any colleagues who are pure chemistry graduates. Uh, there are biochemists, there are molecular biologists, there are physicists, there's a, a wide range. Uh, the one thing I'll say about the government uh, as far as uh, degrees and opportunities, the level of your degree can be very important depending on what you want to do. Uh, I, in our research area, I would just broadly classify the people who work there. There's uh, people we call technicians. In fact, it, yeah, that's underrating them. They do a, a huge variety of work. Then there's the, the professional scientists, the chemists, biologists, um, physical scientists, and then what they call the research scientists. So uh, if you aspire to be a research scientist to do a lot of independent research, uh, you absolutely require a PhD, and it's a, quite a separate career stream in the federal government from any of the others, uh, which uh, may or may not require a specific degree. Usually it's, it'll be worded something like a degree in atmospheric chemistry or equivalent degree in the physical sciences or equivalent work experience. And so that's where I came in. I had a biology degree that worked in chemistry all my working life. So um, I think the exact specialization is not critical. I don't think you'd be cutting off opportunities by taking one versus another, but uh, maybe the overall degree level if you're thinking of going on to grad school. Um, you might want to uh, think about how that uh, relates to the job opportunities out there. Thank you. So I think if I were to sum up, um, um, I think what your 
or the panelists are saying is that um, it really, first of all, it depends on what your goals are, um, what you aspire to be and what, and what you hope to do, um, and that will often dictate what level of education and what courses you'll need to take and that sort of thing. But also, I think what the panelists were saying, was, um, it's more than just your education, it's also your, what else, what, what are the other things that you bring to the table? So your skills, your interests, your passions, your experience, so uh, from previous work, um, from volunteering, from um, working with professors and that kind of thing. Um, and your drive, and your um, and being in the right place at the right time sometimes. And you, some of you talked about networking uh, and knowing people and, and so forth. So I think um, so. It's a number. It's not just your degree, but it's a number of different things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think I'll follow up to that question, and then I'll ask some questions. Uh, I'll get some questions from the floor. Um, in terms of the current work that you're doing, how much of um, um, how well, actually. Uh, um, let me follow up with, um, let me change the question. So in addition to um, that, what additional skills would you say, skills, assets, um, qualities, or knowledge would you recommend that students um, try to gain if they were um, interested in getting into the work that you're, interested in, that you're, you're currently involved in? So if they, were, uh, they wanted to do what you do, um, what advice would you say would you give that in terms of uh, what they should be, might want to consider doing at this point? Peter? I guess I would uh, encourage people just to be generalists, and this is <clears throat> my own personal view, and it's because I work in a small group. My other skills have been really important, uh, maybe not to career advancement in the job, but in terms of opportunities to do, say, some of the more interesting work. I've been able to do a lot of traveling, a lot of field work, and um, the, the project leaders are looking for people who can not only <clears throat> run a gas chromatograph, let's say, but it can also rewire the plug if it, if it breaks when you're on a ship in the middle of the Arctic Ocean, for example. Uh, we do a lot of work in remote places, but just people have a broad uh, group of skills, uh, not uh, necessarily very um, focused on the chemistry only. Uh, perhaps if you're working strictly in a lab environment, it's not quite as important, but I still think it makes you more versatile, and in this day of uh, economic change and and downsizing and uh, tr doing the same or more with less people, uh, having uh, a broad skill sets pretty important. So in my case, things that I taught myself, very, very basic electronics from a high school electronics book, and it's turned out to be pretty useful in, in fixing, uh, you know, basic fixing of instruments. Um, uh, photography, I do photography on the side, and it helps to, to do, uh, we, we present posters at uh, scientific conferences on our work, so I can prepare a poster that's sort of aesthetically pleasing and maybe helps get the point across. Um, uh, just a whole variety of things. Um, I wrote, once read a quote that, um, a little bit of it, I'll try and keep it brief, but basically it says, human beings should be able to change diapers, plan an invasion, butcher a hog, con a ship, design a building, write a sonnet, balance an account, build a wall, set a bone, comfort the dying, Take orders, give orders, cooperate, act alone, solve equations, analyze a new problem, pitch manure, program a computer, cook a tasty meal, fight efficiently, die gallantly, and it, the final point is specialization is for insects. That was Robin <laughs> Heinlein, the uh, science fiction writer. So that's my personal view, and uh, it, this is what's helped me uh, get some of the jobs that I want and to, uh, to be involved in the kind of work I like. Um, teaching jobs. I know the news again saying there are absolutely no teaching jobs. Um, that's not true because people are retiring, I guess, but you have to find a way to distinguish yourself. I'll tell you a little story. We hired a new, because I'm the head of science, we, you know, I'm a part of the interviewing team. We hired a new science teacher just, just a few months ago. Uh, one of her current science teachers had retired in December. And what made her special or different? She the way she sent her, brought in her resume. It's a chemistry position, and it was a little bit juvenile, I thought, but it certainly was creative and attention grabbing. You know, um, she had her, her resume all wrapped up and inserted in an Erlenmeyer flask, and that's how she delivered her resume at our school. At first I thought, and it was in pink, too. <laughs> like, okay, it's pink and it's in an early in my flat. But I remembered. So right away I wanted to see, and then just all of this, she's a very creative person. In this, again, 
they, they, our students. We need creative teachers. We need, yes, I'm a chemistry teacher, but you need to have different ways of teaching chemistry. So the person or the student who has absolutely no interest in science, you can bring that alive to them. Um, as you can see, I'm very animated. Well, that's how I am in my classroom. So my kids, oh, one of the things I always get is like, Miss, you don't look like a chemistry teacher. You don't act like a chemistry teacher. Because you know the glasses are not there, and the lab coat is not there. It's like, no, let's get, well, we blow stuff up too, but you know, it's excitement <laughs> and creativity and finding a way to distinguish yourself you know, don't ever shy away from your individuality. You need to make yourself stand out. When they say there are no jobs, somebody has to teach their kids. Somebody's retiring. So yes, we may not be hiring a thousand teachers this year, but you could be that one by distinguishing yourself. Uh, okay, I have a different perspective because of job nature that I'm doing. Because uh, my company is really big, so. Um, sometimes you really rely on the team to deliver. So, but regardless of whether it's in one person or a team, I think the quality is very important. You're very surprised that uh, when we give a telephone interview or a face-to-face -face interview, you can very easily rec distinguish, dis distinguish one person from the rest of them. It's hard to put into words. Uh, I don't know how to describe it, but um, I would encourage you to uh, look around. Um, it's good to get good score from exams on your courses, but also to look around, learn from people around you to see what good quality uh, th those people possess and what strength you have. Because really make your strength more visible is really important. Just make your weakness not noticeable. Make your strength really stand out. That really will show in all the you know, interaction with people, either for interview or, or going forward for work. And for the type of work I'm working on, uh, you think a PhD level scientist is supposed to be specialized, but um, I certainly have to learn every day. I think more than a year ago, I finished this uh, uh, management training with York School, like, uh, uh, you know, management center. So just, just to be able to, you have to grow constantly. It feels like not, you finish your PhD at, at top, that's not, not the case. Regardless what level, you have to learn constantly, as not just from books, but really 